today. It is good to be here with you again another Wednesday. So I wanted to say to you today, Happy New Year. It is my turn to tell you right here from Karen Althea Ministries. I pray that your new year has been going well. I pray that you are well in body, soul, in mind, in your spirit on a whole. I pray that those that you love that are close to you as well, that they are well. And I pray today that you are having an amazing day. And despite the challenges that come our way, understand that this is the inevitable path of the believer. It happens. It will happen. It will come. And different people get different proportions of the challenges and the struggles. Um, some of our journeys are not, certainly not for the faint of heart, not for those who are weak in heart because it's it could be a difficult journey and there are others of course that it is manageable for you but you are very aware that the valleys and your mountains run side by side i want to remind you that the lord will not give you more than you can bear and so as we face this new year i pray that you're excited i pray that you're expectant about what god is going to be doing in your life in all our lives in the lives of his people. So welcome guys. Thank you for being here. Hi, Sister Juliet. I see you. Welcome. Happy New Year to you too. And to all the others of you um, behind my camera that haven't shown up yet in name, welcome. It is good to have you today. This is your place. Thank you for making it your place today. If this is your first time. Thank you so much for being here. All that we do here is to share in the word of the Lord, in the Holy Scriptures, the Holy Bible, and we empower each other and encourage each other in the word that comes from the Lord uh, to all of us. And we pray that today you would just sit tight with us, stay right where you are, and be blessed by the word that we will share as well. So trust all is well with you in your neck of the woods. It's a lovely day. It's it's manageable, one degree, um, two at the most degrees Celsius. So um, it's been nice, manageable. For others of you having the lovely tropical weather, great, enjoyed for all of us. And wherever you are, from us here, um, the supporters, the, the um, you know, those who care for you and share in this ministry with me, I want to say um, on behalf of all of us that we want you to, to keep safe and be well. And if you don't have to interact with crowds, try not to. Just stay safe, stay inside, be with your family. We do what we got to do until um, we can do otherwise. And so we ask that you do the best in this moment, in this time. All right, so it's good to have you here. I want to share with you today from Psalm 28. Psalm 28, verses 7 and 8. And I want to say to you that God gives, will give you strength for whatever it is that you're going through, whatever challenge, whatever fear even, that God is, is your strength today. So as a theme, you know, I want to testify today that I I am living proof of God's goodness. I am living proof of God's strength. I am living proof of, of just the fact that God is our source. He is our defender. He is our Jehovah. He is provider. He cares for his people. And I don't know where you are at in your life. I don't know your many challenges or not. But I want to say to you from my vantage point, right here where I sit right now, where I am in my life, God is, he is, he is, he exists, he's a rewarder, he is not an absent God, he is an ever-present God in our time of trouble and our distresses. He is God for our plans, he's God that helps us to execute and to make a right and walking that purpose that he has for us. He is God. And today I want to say to you, I am living proof. I am living proof of the goodness of Almighty God. So welcome all of you. Welcome. I see you, Pastor Eric. Welcome. I see you, my sister Lloyd. Thank you for being here. Um, Arlene, so good to see you, my friend. God bless you. I see you, Stacy. Thank you. God is. God is. And I want to remind you um, in Hebrews eleven six, 6, it says, whoever comes to God must believe that he is, that he exists, and that he's a rewarder 
of them that diligently seek him. And so he will give to you. You may not, you are not going to be on the mountain every day. You are going to be experiencing trouble sometimes, challenges, even as you set your New Year's goals, even as you set your resolutions for this new year and all your plans, commit them to him. Commit them to him because you will find challenges. They will come and they will stand up before you and discourage you. But I say to you, my friends, I say to you, brother, sister, that God is, he is, he is. And so today, let's look at the two verses I want to share with you from Psalm 28. And I'm reading from the NLT. It says, the Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. The Lord gives his people strength. He is a safe fortress for his anointed one, his anointed king. And so remember we're on the theme today, I am living proof. As I was reflecting on this word, I remembered when we were, when I was a kid, and I know my sister, one of my sisters is on, so she will remember that too. And those of you who probably have been in the era of my time when we could play outdoors, when we played all kinds of games, hopscotch, skip, you know, sight in the middle, dandy shandy, whatever, all these things we call, some of you have no clue what those games are. But if you're from the Caribbean or have... um if extended families may be from the Caribbean, you may have also been involved in those kinds of games. But one of the things that, one of the games that I remembered clearly as I was reading this passage was a tug of war. How many of us have been involved in tug of wars? It, it's a, it was a competitive game. It was about picking sides in who will be on your team, who will be on the other team. And it was a game of strength. That's the thing about a tug of war. It's a game of strength. And as I read Psalm 28, David started the psalm by saying, I pray to you, O Lord, my rock, do not turn a deaf ear to me. And so as David continued the psalm, we realized that he was begging God not to leave him in a black hole like the, the enemy with the people who are trying to kill him. We know David. David was constantly having challenges, constantly. When he was not running from his, for his life, he was trying to protect his throne that his own son was trying to, to usurp and overthrow with a coup that he formed. He was dealing with issues in his, in his own household with one son raping the daughter and the other brother killing that one. David was constantly in a state and a, and a posture of fighting and battling challenges. Yet, yet the favor of God was over David. Yet God says, look at David, a man after my own heart. Yet God says that the reign, the throne of Israel will continue will forever. Be reigned and, and controlled by the descendant of David. That they will always sit on the throne. The same man who's had so many crosses and trials and distress in his life. So I want to encourage somebody today that you may find yourself in this place in the new year and your challenges and your crosses and your trials continue. And you begin to lose hope because you said to yourself, I thought I left that in 2020. I want to encourage you that because you are handpicked and chosen by God, because there's a great work in you, you are sore eyes for the devil. You are sore eyes. And you know what? Some of the things are not exactly the plans of the enemy. Some of them, as we know, all of them, God would have to allow, but some of them are for the learning and the teaching and the lessons that God has for us. And where? He's going to take you after you've been through that experience. And even if it were a direct plan of the enemy, know that you are handpicked by Almighty God to face this, to manage this challenge. You can do it. You can do it. And so as David found himself in another of these crises, David said, God, I beg you, do not turn a deaf ear to me. He says, let me not be like those who are in the devil's line and camp and, and who set themselves up, who are seeking his employment, 
I am not going to be one of his, his, his employees. I will not be an employee of the devil and the enemy of Almighty God. I will not. That's what David was saying. So do what you need to do to defend me, to protect me, to bring me out of this. So as you go through this new year, my friends, I want you to think of the fact that your life, all lives, is really like the, the tug of war, the game, the two teams, and we would have the rope. And that game was a game of strength. It was dependent on the stronger side. And so what used to happen, I recall, is that, you know, as we stood in the street, we used to play all kinds of games in the streets. Thankfully, there were not many vehicles in those days. And when the one or two coming up on our street, you know it, you hear it. It was big excitement. But whether you were on the common, over in the nice lawn grass, or your school's playground, or in the streets in front of your houses, or however you had your opportunity to play this game, this game was one in which people would strategically select and pick their team members based on strength. A lot of times it turned out to be based on friendship, but it wasn't always. It was primarily based on strength. Those who were considered to be very strong, robust, and could manage to pull the other team. Let me tell you something. The believer's life is like a tug of war. We are constantly wrestling daily the, to, to stay in the spirit and maintain our spirit in the Lord or to battle the plans of the enemy and his devices against us. I want to encourage you today that in the same way we would select and strategically pick people to be on our tug of war team because of their strength and size and their physical form and their abilities to hold the strength to pull the other side to submission. I want to say to you today that it is that kind of metaphor almost that I and 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 that I see coming out of this lesson from David. That the kind of unity. It, so while the team was also one of strength, it also had to be united for that one goal. The goal was to to beat the other team, to make them succumb to your team in strength. Hey, you have to be united with the Spirit of God, in alignment with God, in the strength of God, to fight this warfare that we are existing in. I'm telling you, it's not for the faint of heart. It is not for the weaklings. It's not for those who want pull and you're going to be over. It's a fight to get you over. And we need the strength of Almighty God. And so David says, listen, I have selected my team. I've selected my team. This is what he says in verse 7. And if we look at it in the King James, in the NIV, it doesn't matter what version. David says, the Lord is my strength and my shield. The Lord, he has identified whom his team member is going to be. He has identified and picked and selected whom he wanted on his team. He says, it is the Lord who is my team. It is the Lord who is my strength. It is the Lord who is my shield. And the understanding of this word that David chose to use in, in the Hebrew of strength is also the same word, the understanding of, of shield. Is that it is the Lord who will preserve me. And as a shield, it is the Lord who will protect me. Wow. So, in selecting your team, my friends, for this new year, for this new challenge, for this new battle, and maybe it's still the challenge carried over from last year. Doesn't matter where it falls in the category. You're in a tug of war. You're in daily in a war for your soul and for your spirit. You better choose the team of strength. You cannot cave in. When you're in a tug of war and you've chosen you, you've strategically selected your people of strength. You're not willing to cave in. You're going to fight to the last to try to win. And even when your team is losing, it is still a good fight that you have to put up. I want to say to you, 
select carefully your team. David says, I have chosen God. The Lord is my strength and he is my preservation. He will preserve me and it means that he will attach me to him like the rope with the rest of my team members. He will attach me that my strength is preserved and protected. Hear this. David says, I trust him with my heart. My God, listen, when you enter this game of tug of war, you are trusting your win to every single member on your team. Everyone, you have to pull together. But David says, I am trusting my whole heart to my team member who is God Almighty, the Lord. Jehovah God, the creator of heaven and earth, the one who speaks and when he speaks and when he declares and when he sets out to accomplish something in my life, no man, no man can undo it. And that which is spoken over your life must come to pass. Hallelujah. So I say to you, I say to all of you, my friends, that like David, who says, I have committed my heart. Now, the heart here is, is definitely what is considered the center, the organ that pumps blood around the body, the, the center, the middle. But, but in ex, by extension, the word here also means that it is your entire, entire inner core of who you are. He has entrusted the center of his belief, his existence, Everything he is, including his intelligence, to his team member, who is the Lord. The Lord who is his strength. What a confidence. What a confidence. So first of all, what we notice is that David was selecting his team member in a way that declares that it is God. This is my vote. This is my vote. And actually, that, that's what's coming out here. I vote for God on my team. The Lord is my strength. So when I vote for him in that strength, now I intentionally adventure out to take a risk to commit my whole being to him. You're taking a chance with God. All of us who've ever started on this path with the Lord, we took a chance with the Lord. It, we were just told, we're told in Sunday school, we're told in Sabbath school, we're told in our homes, in our families, you know, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Many of us started out with a chance because we had no experiential knowledge of God. It, it was only on the intelligence of, of what, I, what I hear and, and maybe what I see in others. But when you have entrusted that vote to him, and now you have intentionally ventured your vote, your venture, your risk, your chance. This is your opportunity to prove him for yourself, brothers and sisters. This is what David said. David says, I trusted him with my heart. And hear what? He helps me. <laughs> and my heart is filled with joy. David said in the King James, and I am helped. Living proof. I am living proof. I have experienced him so. I have experienced the power of the strength of Almighty God. It is no longer what I was told in Sunday school. It is no longer what I was told at Sabbath school. It is no longer what the teacher said. It is no longer what my, what my parents said. It is no longer what the neighbor said about him. It is now what I know of him. Now, let me, let me challenge you, brothers, sisters, as you face 2021, as you face this new year, you cannot hold on anymore to the basic belief of faith that you got from somebody, that you heard from somebody. It is going to be what David talks about here. I put my whole heart in him. I, I, I entrusted it. I ventured out. I took a chance, a risk with him. And he helps me. 
it is time for you to reflect on what God has done for you. Because as you face the new challenges of 2021, that's what's going to keep you. That's what kept Jeremiah. He says, when I recall, even, even though everything around him proved otherwise, he said, when I thought about it, when I put my intelligence into all of this, when I think carefully about all that God has done for me, I am living proof. I am living proof of God's goodness. He says, I trusted him and I am helped. Oh, look where God's taken you from. Look what God has done. Many of you have already read my books. Some of you have not yet and, and maybe have heard of it. But for those of you who have read Rise, Transforming Pain into Pillars of Strength. And if you haven't gotten your copy yet, it's available on Amazon and, and Barnes and Noble. Get your copy, whether it's an ebook or a paperback. And, and as you read those some of those struggles that I have encountered, but every single time, every single time God has come through, every single time, it's never always how I expected him to come through. But every time, every time, that's what David is talking about here. That when I pull, when that rope is pulled and it's being pulled to crush me and to draw everything from beneath me, the Lord is my strength. I trusted him with this war. I trusted him with my whole being, the core of my being, and he has helped me. God is available to help you. I want to remind somebody about that today. I know it doesn't seem like it when you're in the moment. It doesn't feel like it when you're in the moment. I thought I would at least start the new year with a you know nice new couple of days to, 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 to go easy and to, to, to not have issues. I close the year with, with all kinds of major service waterline issues on my property. Closing the year and starting a new year with it. And at first, when I had someone come in to give me an assessment, they gave me a few thousand dollars that initially it may look like. Can I tell you? Can I tell you that even as they came to do further investigation, it tripled. The cost for repair tripled. And I said it was thousands first. Tripled. What, it would, what I thought, what they thought originally should take to repair. But... We are in a tug of war. And I chose Almighty God on my team. He is my strength. He is my source. And he, he will. He will help. He has helped. That's the God. So as you vote, as you venture into the matters of the heart with the things that challenge you, you're taking a risk on this faith issue, but God never fails. His words never fail. His words never fail. I am testimony, and I know that you are too, and he will bring you. He will bring you through this. Mighty God, may he, may, could he just roll back the curtains of memories now and then and just show you, just remind you, like Jeremiah said, when I recall when I brought to memory how God has helped me. May you recall in 2021 all that God has done for you, all he's been. You remember how your year started, all our year? You remember how it started? No, we didn't know we were going to get here. We have no clue. We still don't know. But look, you are here. You are here today because he kept you. I'm here because he kept me. We are here. And that's what David talks about. So David says, I vote for the Lord. He's my strength on my team. And I ventured my heart into something. I didn't know how it was going to go, but God helped me. And here's the other thing. He said, because my vote and my venture prove something positive, I will lift up my voice 
to Almighty God and I will praise Him and I will praise Him and I will glorify Him and I will praise Him. He says that I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. I want to send somebody back to a place of praise today. You praise God even when they say it should take how long. Can I tell you, when I, when I called those plumbers to, to, to check um, the situation out and then I called my insurance, the, the customer service rep is doing her job. She's like, you know, with the holidays and with everything, it's going to take maybe 48 hours and it could be delayed because of everything that's going on. But I began to praise Almighty God. I began to lift up my voice like David says, and I praised him. I said, you are my help. You are proof. You are my strength. What should have been 48 hours reply became less than two hours reply. When the plumbers came and they said, oh, it's going to take days likely to get to get any approval from, from the water people, line, gas line people, and the city people. And, and, and so we don't know when the work will start. I began to praise Almighty God. And I walked around the place and I praised Him. And I pulled out the paperwork and I praised Him. Let me tell you, the following day, the following day, what should have taken days became hours, my brothers and sisters. I'm living proof. I'm living proof of God's goodness. So today I want to challenge you in this new year. You are proof. You are proof. That's why you're still here. That's why you're still here. You didn't think you were going to make it. Many people didn't want you to make it. But look at you. You're still standing. Still here. Still here. So I want to say, make your vote today for Almighty God to be on your tug of war team. You want him on your side for he's your strength. He's our strength. He is our shield and our security. He is our shield and our salvation. And even more than that, David says, so I will praise him as I venture out, I, I make my vote, I venture out believing him with my whole heart, and I lift up my voice to him, and I will praise him. Because the thing about Almighty God, he says here, the Lord gives his people strength. He is a safe fortress for his anointed king. You see this word anointed? This word anointed is one of the most important words ever used in the Old Testament. It occurs about 40 times. But here's something about this. What's important about this word is that it is a special title of honor which highlights a unique relationship between God and this individual. This is what the word is. This is what the word is. When you have a unique relationship with Almighty God, you are considered his anointed one so because you're his anointed one today lift up your voice lift up your voice sing unto god david says he saves he is a safe fortress that means that that he sees to your welfare he brings you deliverance and he brings you victory that's the god that's the god we serve my brothers and sisters so today today and for 2021, you are living proof that the Lord will see you through. Have an amazing Wednesday. Stand fast in your faith, in all that you are, in everything that God has been to you. Stand fast. I say to you, do not lose hope in your faith, despite what's going on around you. God has answered you before. You've been here before. And he's your help. So make your vote. Step out with your venture in your whole heart believing and make your voice praise him from your, the rising of the sun till the down setting. Lift up your voice and praise almighty God for you are living proof that he's good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here today. Our first, first Wednesday in the new year. I pray that this word will keep you today, tomorrow, and for the rest of the year that you will remember. You are living proof. That's why you're still here. 
You're not dead yet. You're proof, and not just any proof, living proof. You're alive to tell the story of Jesus and his glory in your life. So meet me right here again next week, Wednesday, 4.30 Eastern Time. Let's talk about the Lord. Let's encourage each other in the Lord. Let's be blessed by all that God has been to us. So love and blessings to you. And if you miss this or those you know that miss it or don't have Facebook, remind them that we, the same presentation, the same um, text here will be on YouTube. Run over to YouTube, subscribe and, and listen and tell others. There are many people who don't want to keep a social media platform account or anything like that. You send them over to YouTube. Be blessed by the word because this year we are living proof of God's goodness and we're not going to cave in. We have voted for the, the team of strength. As we move head on into this tug of war, we're not retreating, we're not surrendering because we voted for the Lord God who is our strength. Thank you so much for making this your place. Um, have an amazing rest of the week. Enjoy your weekend wherever you worship, whatever it is. Go back to the Lord this week and cast your vote, a fresh vote for his strength in you for this journey. And I'll meet you again right here next week. Love and blessings to you and you and you and your households. Peace.